In this video, we're going to define a reduced row echelon form, which is a souped up version of row echelon form. In this video, we're just going to define reduced row echelon form. We'll talk about what makes it powerful later. A matrix is in reduced row echelon form if it satisfies three requirements. First, it must be in row echelon form. So that's what I meant when I said that it's a super up version of row echelon form because it has to be in row echelon form, but also all of its leading entries have to be one and also, and this is the big one, every number of Above a leading entry has to be zero. To be in row echelon form, every number below a leading entry has to be zero. To be in reduced row echelon form, we still have that requirement. And now we have this additional requirement that the entries above the leading entries be zero. So, for example, this matrix is in reduced row echelon four. And to see that, let's just go through the requirements one by one. Is it in row echelon form? To be in row echelon form, any row of all zeros like this has to be at the bottom of the matrix tricks below any non-zero rows. That's true. And everything below a leading entry has to be zero. We have three leading entries. And it is true that everything below each of them is zero. So check. Remember that although when we stated the definition of row echelon form, we gave three conditions, two of those conditions was equivalent. So the reason we didn't bother to check that the leading entries go to the right. I mean, that this leading entry is to the right of this leading entry, and that this leading entry is to the right of this leading entry, is that that's equivalent to all of the entries below a leading entry being zero. Anyway, all the leading entries are supposed to be one. Yes, yes, yes. And all the numbers above a leading entry are supposed to be zero. Yes, yes, yes. So this matrix satisfies all three of these conditions and is in reduced row echelon form.